on May 2nd, get ready to escape. ISIS escaped from Transylvania. The goddess next door and John Haynes must escape a horde of vampires on the hunt in this horror-filled ISIS series adventure. Get ISIS Escape from Transylvania in paperback and e on May 2nd. One of my friends, a black comic creator, was expressing his frustration to me about the lack of support he has received in the black community. And this was something I could relate to because it's something I have experienced myself over the last nine years as I've started to build this SJS Direct imprint. And as I have started to build this SJS Direct imprint, I have run into resistance primarily from mostly black people, even black people in my own family. And when it comes down to black people, these are the people who go on social media and they sit there and they complain about all these negative images in media, all these stereotypes being promoted in media regarding black people. However, whenever a black person goes out of their way, especially a black man, to go out here and publish and produce a positive story about an African-American or the African-American experience, it is often African-Americans who are the first ones to give you resistance. And this is something I have run into ever since 2009 when I started the SJS Direct imprint and I published the first book, All About Maryland. When I first published All About Maryland back in 2009, it was people in my own family who were upset about this book and many were trying to sabotage me because I had a chance to get on a radio show to promote All About Maryland and one of my own family members sabotage me before I could get on that show. So I know what he's talking about regarding the lack of support you get when you go out here to try to create African American media that is positive because I've run into this time and time again. I mean I can remember not only the All About Maryland incident with the radio show on, on one of these online radio shows but I can also talk about the resistance I've run into as I've gone out here to publish books like the ISIS series because as I was publishing the ISIS series when I started the series uh, around 2012 I ran into resistance from people who were complaining about skin tones and hair and all this foolishness and then I ran into resistance on hope from hoteps who were talking about the hand-drawn covers and things like that and what these people didn't understand was I was working from a limited budget and limited resources and I was trying to publish as many books as possible with limited budget and limited resources. But these people did not understand this, so they decided they were going to go castigate me on one of these message boards out here, and they were, they were trying to attack me. And I said, okay, since these people have such an issue with these covers, I decided to go out here and take parts of my toy collection, put it up on eBay for sale, and then raise the money to pay for a book cover. And I did that after a Kickstarter failed. I decided to go on eBay, put up parts of my toy collection that I had for years, and raise the money to pay for the cover for Isis Wrath of the Cyber Goddess. And after I raised the money, paid for paid the artist to design this cover, an artist who had done national ad campaigns, art for national ad campaigns, and was, you know, a very top quality commercial artist. After I published that book, I ran into resistance from yet again the same black people. And when I showed people that cover for Isis Wrath of the Cyber Goddess, the first thing that they wanted to tell me was the characters on the cover weren't black. When clearly they were black, and you could see that they were black, but what they were doing was in trying to engage into a straw man argument so they could have an excuse not to buy that book which featured black characters because a lot of what I found with a lot of black people is they pay a lot of lip service to this whole thing regarding black characters but when it comes down to supporting those characters when they come from a black creator they come up with excuses not to buy that same product these people will sit there and whine and complain on social media about there not being any of these characters but then when you go out here and create product and you're a black man, what they will do is then go out here and make excuses not to buy that product. And on top of those excuses, what many of these black people will do is they will sit there 
and go on other forums and then talk about how you're a sellout. And I had a guy do that on a mess on a blog talking about how I was a sellout when I published the Bride of Dracula cover and talking about how I was pushing, you know, whiteness and all this other stuff. But what he didn't understand was I was promoting diversity as it related to African American image because when it comes down to horror stories and fantasy stories, there are no African Americans and the ones who are there, they usually are winding up dead in the first five minutes. So with this Bride of Dracula, I was showing that a black hero could participate in this type of story and they could survive all the way to the end. And in spite of all of that resistance, Isis Bride of Dracula wound up wanting, becoming one of the better selling Isis series books and one of the more popular Isis series books. And what, and what really propelled the book, as I see it, really was people going out to support it. And what's really sad is I have to go, in many cases, outside of the black community in order to get support. And this is what my comic artist friend found when he went out here with his comic strip, is that he got endorsed and promoted by a white guy it, not and not people in the black community. And this is, this is what's happened to me as well. When I go out here and I promote books, a lot of times I get more support outside of the black community than I do from the black community. And I, what's really sad about that is I created a lot of these characters to provide African Americans with positive heroes and to create positive stories about the African American experience but it's not whites and non-blacks who are enjoying these stories more so than the people in the black community. Because I remember when I published a book called The Thetas back in 2013, I was writing that story to get to show African Americans a positive story about African Americans in African American sororities. But the first person to give me a positive review was a white girl from Pennsylvania. And that was really powerful to me. It showed me how great the story was and how it resonated with non-black audiences. And with the Thetas, most, most of the sales I got on the Thetas were, were from non-black people. It was mostly from white people and mostly from non-black people. And it did well in foreign countries. And that's another thing that I'm finding whenever I publish African-American fantasy fiction or I publish positive stories about African-Americans a lot of the sales I get are not from African Americans. A lot of the sales I get are from white people, Hispanic people, Asian people, and people in foreign countries. And people in foreign countries, as I'm seeing, they tend to want to buy much of the African American stories I present more so than black people, because a lot of the sales I get from foreign places are from the UK, from Germany, from France, from Italy, from Japan, from Mexico, India, all these places, they have no problem going out here to support Afri African American characters who are positive, African American characters who are balanced, African American characters are humanized, but black people have a problem supporting those products. And it shows me how deeply spellbound many black people are and how this mental dysfunction relates to them in their own image because. Many of those same black people who castigate me and the, for creating ISIS or creating John Haynes or creating Easting, they'll get mad about those characters and talk about how they're too light-skinned or how they're not black enough. But these same people were in a frenzy over this Black Panther movie, which featured a fictional African country, which was created by two Jews. And they were sitting there ready to hand over their money to go see that movie in droves and they made that a billion dollar franchise but they won't sit there and go out and support a black creator who has gone out of their way to create a black character and what many of these people don't understand is you need to support your characters in order for other people to support your characters and what's sad about black people is they never put black first when it comes down to black characters and that's why people all over the world really don't really see black characters as great because we don't see them as great. And what's really sad is that it usually takes white people liking a character 
in order for the black people to come in. Because when it comes down to a lot of black people, again, they're spellbound by white supremacy, and they believe that the white man's ice is colder. And they believe that, they, that in order for a black person to be able to buy something black, they need to be shown that it's safe by white people in order to go buy it. And the great irony is, is that I go out here and I've created these products, and my comic creator friend, he's going out here and created a product, and the white people will go out and buy it first, but the black people, they'll just sit there, and they're still waiting there for someone to go out here and validate them, one of these big-time white celebrities to go out here and say that this is good for them to go out and buy it on the regular. Now, the only place I have ever seen positive support from black people where they put the black product first was when I published Spinsterella in 2015. When I published Spinsterella in 2015, the first people to come out and help me get the word out about this book and support this book were people in the black goth subculture. Now, the people in the black goth subculture, when they heard that Spinsterella was coming out and they heard that I was doing a story about black goths and the black goth subculture, they were the first ones to start posting it on their Tumblr. They were the first ones to go out here and get the word out. They were the first ones to go out here and, and tell more people about the book and build up the word of mouth. When it came down to the black goth subculture, they were putting black first. And when I came out with Spellbound in 2016, it was the goth subculture, not only the black goth subculture, but the white goth subculture as well, and the foreign goth subculture. Those people, they came out in droves to go out here and buy Spellbound and get the word out about Spellbound. They came out and in the way that I would have expected black people to come out, but black people, they'll sit there and say, we need this, but then they won't go out here and put their money behind it. Black people came out for Spinsterella and Spellbound and the goth subculture, and black men came out for those books. But when it came down to the overall black community, whenever I post up a product, it's usually I get the most resistance from people like your hoteps, your pro-blacks, people who say we need to change the black image, we need more positive images of black people in black media. But these same people, they'll sit there whenever you create a product and then sit there and complain, oh, this product, there's something wrong with it, or this character is too light-skinned, or this character doesn't act quote-unquote black, or this isn't a real black experience, not understanding that when I go out here and write a story, I'm trying to present people with a diversity of images so that they can see a bigger picture of the black community. And I even had a family member getting mad at me because on Sunday, because she was mad because the Colleen character in the Thetas was a rich black girl, and she lived on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. And I sat there and I said to myself, you're getting mad at a character for living on the Upper East Side of Manhattan, because what I'm, and not understanding what I'm trying to do is show that black people, we all come from different walks of life, different experiences, and different, um, different cultures, and that there is no one black experience because a lot of black people, again, they're spelled down by the ideas that white liberals have put in their minds that black people all come from one story, all black people come from the ghetto, and that all black people are poor and struggling. And that's not the case at all. When it comes down to black people, there, there is an entire black community. There are people who have experiences and different lifestyles. And we need to see stories about those different experiences and lifestyles because in the white community, you get to see those experiences and lifestyles. But in the black community, all you get told about is the hood, the streets. And that's black through a white lens. I, what I want to do is show you the darker shade of black. The darker shade of black is one where we define our image. And the only way we can define our image is if we go out here and support black creators who are going out here to publish books which prevent a, present us with a diversity of images, a diversity of stories, and a diversity of experiences, because it's those black creators who are going to do that. The mainstream publishers, they're not going to do that, but you can't explain that to black people, because many black people are spellbound, believing that in a covert contract, that if they go out here and support white characters created by white people, like the Black Panther, that 
what that was going to happen is it's going to lead to those mainstream companies creating more black characters. No, that's not going to happen. All they're going to do is give you black through a white lens, black that fits their narrative, and black stories that tell their view of black, not tell the black experience from a black person's perspective, or show you a diversity of images of black people all over the United States and other parts of the world. No, the only way you're going to get that time, those kinds of stories is if you go out of your way to support black creators like myself, Mike Williams, who creates the Deek Sledge Trip, Chris Miller, who creates the Chronicles of PA and creates a naturally cute coloring book, and many other black creators out here, because it's black creators who desperately need your help and support because they are the ones who are going out of their way and taking their time to try to elevate black people, present positive images of African Americans, present humanized images of African Americans, and give people a better understanding of the black experience and black culture. And there's clearly an audience for these products out there because I've seen it whenever I publish books like the Isis series, the Spinsterella trilogy, the Temptation of John Haynes, the East Team series. A lot of those white people and non-black people, they have been enthusiastic about those books. They've been really out there trying to get the word out and they really like what they've read. And we as black people need to understand if they can go out here and support these products, you can go out here and support them as well. Because if it, the only way for these products to grow and get an audience is if we put, if black people start putting them first and, and going out here to support them, because the big problem with a lot of black people is they're sitting there waiting on the sidelines for some white person to tell them that it's good, but those white people have already seen how good it is, and I've seen them all over the world see how good these stories are. And you don't have to wait for someone to tell you to go out here and support a black product. If you see a great black product, you go out of your way to tell others about it. You go out of your way to share it with other people. And that's something I do on the regular because I understand that many of these black creators, they have bills to pay and they're taking time out of their lives to go out here and create these products. Now, whenever I go out here, it usually takes me six months to a year to get a book ready for publication. A lot of people, they'll sit there and they don't understand how much time goes into, you know, one of these projects like an ISIS series book, which may look like 60 pages, but in some cases are 100 pages. But it usually takes me six months to a year to get that book edited and then get it formatted for not only paperback, but for the many of the numerous platforms like Smashwords, like Kindle, and Barnes and & Noble's Nook. So it takes a lot of hours to get those books to ready for the marketplace. It takes a lot of editing, it takes a lot of research, and it takes a lot of um, planning. And that takes time. And a lot of black people, they'll sit there and it's really, they'll sit there and dismiss what you're doing, not understanding how much work goes into putting together a single book because it takes a lot of work to put these books together and I know that my comic creator friends it takes even more work to do because they're not only drawing the art but they're also going out here and writing up the story doing the page layouts doing the photoshopping and I know what photoshopping is because it can take hours to get a single image ready through photoshopping and in the inks and the colors it takes a lot of time for a lot of these black creators to go out of out and create these products and it, it is something that a lot of black people you know they don't really appreciate because they're just used to getting an end product from a white company but not understanding that black creators they it takes a lot of time for us to go out here and put these products together because we or a lot of times we have working a nine to five job or we're working on shoestring budgets to get stuff out here and we're looking to get get things out here towards the audience and it's really you know frustrating whenever you run into resistance from other black people, black people who will question your motives for creating these products, call you a sellout, say that you don't really care about the black community, when you really are creating this product from a place from your heart because you care about the black community, you care about black people, and you want to create positive images of African Americans because 
they, they, you know that the images that are presented in the mainstream media are not really positive, they're not really balanced, they're not really humanized, they really don't give you a real positive picture of what goes on as related to black people, and it's really, it's really disheartening for a black creator to deal with every day, like I have dealt with over the years, whenever you present a product, and the first thing people want to tell you is, that character isn't black, that character isn't black enough, that character isn't acting black, when you knew people in your own real life who acted a lot like these characters, and you knew people who lived these lifestyles, and then these people want to tell you they don't want to support your product, but then these same people will sit there and cry on social media, and they're crying and complaining, as in many cases I'm seeing it now, for some white person to pay them attention, not understanding the great irony is, is that white people are already paying attention to black people who, like myself, who are trying to present those images out there, and they're supporting those images before black people, the same black people are sitting there waiting for some white person's approval to go out and buy a product. And that's the saddest thing about, you know, black creators these days, is that we have to sit there and, and in the, on the sidelines, like we did with this whole Black Panther frenzy, all these people were in a frenzy over Black Panther, and ready to go out here and buy Black Panther comics, and go to the movies, and all this other stuff, but those same people never once looked over at all these African American fantasy and science fiction creators who have been working for years producing stories, and then not one single person wanted to even look in their direction, or look in our direction, when that frenzy was going on. Not a single black person wanted to do that, and that's why I could understand my black comic creator's frust friend's frustration when he was telling me about how he was getting, he had gotten a white person to go out and endorse his product and support his product before any other black person, and that's really a shame. If we were really serious about Black First, we really need to really start making efforts to support black publishers of fantasy and science fiction and black comic creators, because the only way we're going to get those balanced and humanized images and those brand new stories is if we go out here and help many of these brothers and sisters get their products to the next level. If you want to help me take the SJS Direct catalog to the next level, you can click the link to Amazon.com and pick up an ISIS series book, an E-Steam series book, The Temptation of John Haynes and the Spinsterella Trilogy on Amazon.com. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.